Burgess here with Kilohertz at InstaFest. There is a companion video to this one, and this one we're going to go over Phase Plant. And Phase Plant is just a monster of a synth, just to show you. There's a lot of cool stuff here. I have a couple sticky keys on this keyboard. But yeah, there's a ton of options. It's essentially got endless effects processing, endless modulation processing, and the sound sources are extremely versatile. Full FM abilities, AM abilities, uh, sampler abilities, wavetables, you name it, it's in there. It is really cool. So we're going to go over this, and if you're brand new, I'm going to show you, you don't need to know a lot to go really far with Phase Plant, which is kind of why it's cool. It works with beginners well. It also works with extremely advanced producers very well because it just it scales very deeply uh there the other video covers multi-pass which is a multi-band processor and it covers snap heap each one of these is an engine that loads snap-ins snap-ins are kilohertz versions of vsts and this just makes it so they can optimize it to work in their system and keep things very cheap on the cpu there are a few things you can turn on though if you really want to give your cpu a challenge but just so you know, the other video covers these two engine hosts. And if you come in to here, you'll notice in here, you can actually nest them. You can put multi-pass in phase plant and you can come into multi-pass and load another multi-pass. And you can go into that one and load another one and you know, away you go. So it can get really dang wild, really dang fast. In fact, let me show you how deep it goes before we dive into the, to actually making something. Let's just say, I guess we're gonna make something right now real quick, but we're gonna gloss over everything. I'm just gonna do a few things just to show you. Here we have a sawtooth waveform. Again, sticky keys. I gotta figure out what's causing that. So very cool, the standard waveform, you know, not super exciting by itself. Let's just say we don't know very much about effect processing and what we kind of wanna do. We just wanna do things. Well, we could go over here, grab a multi-pass, open it up and check out the presets here. Maybe we'll try, I don't know, creative because that's what we're trying to be, right? This one's called creative delays. Let's see. Gated dub vibes, filter convolver. That could be a cool one. Mm -mm. Okay, so let's take this one. And then in here, it's been split into two bands. Let's say on this band, we'll add another multi-pass. We'll do what I was showing earlier. We'll come into this one and add another effect. This time, let's go for like a reverb. We'll go for the first one. Why not? And that's, you know, took us what? A minute? And that's, that's just because I was uh, explaining things a little bit as I went. And then what's even cooler is out here, we've got access to these controls here. We could add a modulator say an envelope hook this envelope up to control the reverb so the reverb will turn on and this filter amount will turn on when we push a note oh yeah this is getting pretty cool we could bring out the attack time a touch But you can see, we've gone down the rabbit hole already a little bit. So it can go very deep, a very, very cool thing. Let's go over some of the basics though. Uh, get our heads around how this monstrosity can do something so cool so fast. So fundamentally, it's very straightforward. You've got your sound sources, they make noise. They go into your effects area and that goes out your master. You have things that can influence the sound sources or the effects. These are called modulators. They're like turning the knobs for you kind of a thing. I'm assuming most of you guys who are watching this already kind of have a grasp of what a modulator is. So let's go over a basic effect chain or a basic chain. Let's just load up an analog. So there it is. This can go out to one of the lanes. So there's three lanes and then there's the master output. So we could have each lane do its own dedicated thing. You see that lane one goes to lane two, lane two goes to lane three, 
Lane three coming down here goes out to the master. I could send this output. So right now here's the saw wave. It's going to this envelope. And then that envelope goes to the effects. Like all the arrows just tell you where it's going. We could go out to the master. It's not going to any of the effects, no input. We could have it go to lane three. We could add effects here. We could have a second one. This one can go to lane one. Lane one, we could send straight to the master. So now lane one and three are separate. On lane three, I could have something like a Haas effect. And on lane one, so I'm just adding some effects here. That's, that's the whole point. Um, I could add a reverb. And so I could make this Haas effect quite dramatic. We could have a distortion on one. We could even perhaps filter it out a little bit if we so desire. There's a lot of things we could do. For example, we could have on here uh, a snap heap. Snap heap allows you to have a bunch of serial bands if we want to expand the parallel processing capabilities. Because here, right, we'd eat one of our valuable lanes that we could send these sources to. So it makes sense to open a snap heap instead. Inside of Snap Heap, I could use one of my lanes. I could make them in parallel. I could toss on a filter and filter out the high end and then toss on a distortion and mix that in with the original and then send that out on its way by just moving this gain control. We'll bring the drive up quite a bit and play some notes. <laughs> we go now let's say we want to make this a little more interesting we could come into the unison controls here turn the unison on one of the outputs but let's do it to the one that's going to lane one because that one goes to that distortion that we set up so i could come here and turn on the unison and now <laughs> So you can see how quickly some of these connections can be made. They're very easy to make fast, and it's very fun and easy to do experiments. Let's look at the sound sources themselves and what our options are. So we have analog. This gives you your standard waveforms, uh, a sync function, which is pretty dang cool, and also the ability to do some basic FM stuff. So there's a square wave. If I add another source, like an analog, but I add it, you see how this would be like another group? This will put it here, but it's after the output. So if I add it here, this never goes anywhere. You see no arrows connected to this. I can then take this output, let's make it a sine wave, and give it some phase modulation, perhaps. So we can see it immediately visually represented. And I could drive the volume of this. Let's grab an envelope, bring it over here. And I'm going to modulate. So if it's green, if it's a green plus when you click it, all things that turn on can be audio rate modulated. So full audio modulation. This is control signal modulation. They do this to save like CPU because audio rate modulation can be expensive uh, processing wise. So we could take this and we could modulate the level so that when this is low, this is low. We could have it turn on and off. So we could have this start at level zero. And as this turns on, this modulation will get greater because it's driven by, it's, it's level driven. And we could of course do this with, say for example, some AM as well. And you could tell it's AM because you can like see this sine wave like right on it. So see how, it, see how the shape matches the shape here. It's just that some AM does because it's an amplitude related process. Uh, the sidebands generated by AM are way less complicated than the ones generated by FM. Anyways, you can see, this source really specializes. I, I like to grab it a lot for, first, if I want one of the fundamental waveforms, or if I want one of those shapes, but also it's great for modulation purposes. Everything can do this, but with the, I tend to favor these this source for that purpose. Let's grab another thing. Let's take away all these. So you've also got a noise generator. The noise generator has different slopes. So right now its default is pink noise. You can go to brown and then white. Very handy for all kinds of like filter effects, sweeps, those sorts of things. 
And then you've got a sampler. You can load samples up into this. Probably not going to really dive into this one here because then I'd, I'd be digging through samples. And there's just cooler stuff. This is really cool, but there's just things I think are cooler that we could talk about. And then we've also got the wavetable. And in here is a full wavetable editor. <laughs> Again, this one goes a little deep. So we might not touch the wavetable editor, but we can move through wavetables. Some of my favorite are vocally vowel like wavetables. If we open up the wavetables here, we're on morphs. But if we come down to vocals, let's go for like a four minute suite. Those are always kind of nice. Move the frame. Oh, yeah. So we could grab another envelope down here, modulate the frame by that, and then give it some amount of time to get to that top part. Maybe a little slower. Maybe we offset it a little bit. And maybe we don't modulate it all the way. And then what we could do is play a really low note. Add a distortion to it. Maybe, so there's there's a couple distortions in the effects. Uh, we could add a fuzz, for example. F U, I forgot, is it not called fuzz? I always forget what the name of this thing is. There's another distortion in here, though, that is a fuzz-related distortion. Uh, Faturator, that's what it's called. It's basically a fuzz. And this right now, we have it set into lane one, but lane one's going out to the master. See so yeah, how there's no input here? So let's just go ahead and set this up um, to go to lane two. So it'll go here as well. I could put it under here. In fact, you can just move it under there. And you can also hold control and click to duplicate stuff. Like there's a it, workflow wise, it's very smooth. Um, but I, I like to have, if I know I'm not gonna have that many effects, I put them where I don't have to do as much scrolling to see everything. And you can minimize stuff, but I like to have the interfaces open when I can. So that's why I'm putting it here. A long winded explanation for it. We could turn on the unison here, give it a small detune value, you don't need much, and make it only two voices. So it's mostly a phase thing. And then here, I might make it uh, monophonic, so I'll bring it down to one. And I'll make it, uh, I'll leave it on retrigger. But you can see how quickly you can get a, a dang cool line just from something like this. In fact, what we could do is instead of driving this exclusively with an envelope, we could add on an LFO. There's also now, this is newer, an LFO table, a wave table LFO. Uh, it, look, it's so cool. Uh, I'm not going to be diving into this. We'll stay with the standard LFO for now. This is fine. And... When you go in here, if you click on the edit, it acts like a sequencer. So you can actually write in like whole sequences if you should desire. But we could add this on to our, uh, our movement here. So it just sort of moves back and forth. But whenever we hit it, we're gonna get a little extra pump from this envelope here. And then here, you know, this is pretty mono. Uh, we, we could do with some more interesting stereo things, right? So, you know, let's do that. Uh, there's several you could do. There's even one here called stereo. I like the Haas effect. Um, I have a soft spot in my heart for the Haas. It's just a delay between the left and the right speakers. It's very quick. If it's quick enough, it sounds like sound is being spatially located because your ear gets sound before one ear and your brain thinks, oh, it must be coming from another direction. <laughs> If you bring it way down, it tends to sound more centered because the delay is so small. The more you bring it up, the more it tends to move, and you can switch the perceived direction by changing the channel. I think that's pretty dang cool. Let's say that, hey, we want to, you know, clean this up a little bit uh, and, and separate it out. Here, I'm tempted to grab a multipass. So if we grab a multipass, we can, we can do stuff to it at a band level. So this low end stuff, I kind of want to leave alone. I, I think it sounds cool. But what I want to do to uh, some of this higher stuff is let's add a disperser. I'm just curious what this would be like. So disperser is a whole bunch of all pass filters like right next to each other from what I understand. So if you move around the disperser, this thing, you can get some really weird phasey things going on. So we could grab an envelope for this one. And have it oops i grabbed the bevel instead we want to do something like that maybe 
We'll click this. We'll have it move this around. And then note, I, this is another sticky note. Oh my word, this keyboard is gonna drive me insane. Let's move this down and also like limit it a bit. And let's clone this. I actually, when cloning, I'm not seeing, yeah, it does copy all the automation. I couldn't remember. Um, bring these down and we'll give them like different amounts. Like we'll leave this one alone more. And we'll bring the pinch way up on the high end. And you hear that extra tweety goodness we get at the top now. And there's other things we could do in here, but you know, this is pretty simple. I just kind of wanted to add some weird motion to it. We could also give it a name and stuff so that we remember what the heck's going on in there. Uh, something that's kind of interesting we could do is we could add on a, another analog. And we could have this modulate the the level, let's go for some FM type stuff. Let's also go for a more safe, not safe shape. Let's go for a triangle wave. That would be really cool if we had this move as well. Sometimes I like to separate out my modulators from the other things, like, you know, click this. And I'm gonna assign it to the same envelope. Sometimes what I mean is I, I'd add another envelope from this one, but we'll have it all be driven by one envelope. This could sometimes bite you sometimes if you, uh, if you do this, what am I trying to say? This can screw you up if you do this um, all on one, cause then undoing the effects on one, it can be just a pain to undo everything and set, reset it all up. Uh, I want to control the volume level of this guy. So we'll, we'll just give it a bit of a boost and we'll set this to volume level zero. Is it right click? Yeah, you can set it to zero here. So it's zero. And then when we click a note, it'll pop up. And then see if it tighter sound is what we want. And then maybe we want a little bit of a swell as we hold down the note. We will grab an LFO for that, but we'll make it even slower, like 0.2 of a hertz is fine. And we will add that also to here. You can also like modulate your modulation with like these like extra conditional things, uh, but we're not gonna do that. And then maybe we wanna time that a bit slower, something like that. And let's toss on a filter after. Let's grab a, I, I kind of want two filters. We'll put a filter here. And let's also put a filter at the front that just, just shaves off some of that low and we'll make it a high pass. Now these are very transparent filters. Uh, what we might do is have this filter um, open up with it. So maybe it starts low and it follows the same FM modulation. You know, if we're gonna use the same filter for stuff, it's double down, right? Maybe open it up a little more. Oh, and here, you know, instead of using this filter, there's a filter with attitude, the nonlinear filter. Uh, let's go for, I don't know, fuzzy. Since we're using Fatuator, why not? And we'll grab this and have this modulate the cutoff. Give it a crazy cue, because that's where you get the cool nonlinear stuff. Bring the drive up some. Let's try out a couple. See, it's saturated. Nah, saturated's got this crazy whoop sound to it. Uh, let's go tubular. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's bring the cue down some. I think we got a pretty cool preset at this point. But you can see, you just you just go down the rabbit hole. There's so much interesting, fun stuff to just play with. So let's say like, we like that. We could save it as like, you know, name cool Insta. Why not? And we'll just we'll just save that. So if we want to come back to it, we can. 
let's uh, let's let's do another. Let's add another phase plant, since we have uh, some time to do so. Let's go for a pad sound this time. So you can see already, there's like a ton of stuff. There's different ideas you could explore. Things like stacked effect chains are very interesting to try out. Uh, with the advent of a LFO wavetable modulator, there's just a lot of weird shapes and things that come about that you just wouldn't get any other way. Like creatively, they just don't usually come about. So let's go to new though. And usually for this kind of stuff, uh, I like to, uh, there's a variety of ways we could go. Let's do something with noise and analog combined. They do have some distortions and filters built into the early chain, which can be pretty handy along with like things like some output options. Uh, let's keep stuff pretty standard here. We'll go for an analog and we'll have a second voice that handles some noise. This noise will leave as pink noise, that'll be fine. And the pink noise will drop off at lane three first. And we'll add on a reverb on there. And we could also uh, tune it to a resonator, which could be cool, which could be cool. Yeah. So one other thing we're going to do here is we're going to add a filter to the middle of this. This is nice because it won't eat a slot in our effects area. So we can bring this up, just have a filter here, just get some of that. And we'll, we'll move this around with an envelope and move these envelopes around. We'll have it come on slowly and we'll have the filter chomp down. So when the filter is high, we'll have it, we'll, we'll negatively associate it. So as this moves up, it'll move the filter down. Yeah, we'll pull this back some. Okay, we're going to need to do some stuff as well, of course, up here. Uh, the first thing is, let's play some higher notes. And let's, let's make them kind of like a flute style sound. So maybe we also modulate the level to come down according to another envelope that has a slightly different shape. It turns on over time a little slower. The level will start out at zero. I'm used to being able to double click and have things. Switching from synth to synth always just throws me. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna take this. We're gonna modulate the level so it turns on over time. This one will have a sustain of zero. So it'll be more of like a pluck kind of thing. And then we'll manage how loud that can be. Maybe we'll give it a faster tap. this down a little bit more bring the decay back and I do I want a little bit of sustain just a touch where's my sustain at oh am I uh, I'm taking it out with the with this that's part of the issue so let's um no, the sustain should be holding up, but it holds up at a negative value. So we just want to limit this. There we go. That's something that I have to be like thinking about how the, all the different pieces of your chain are going. We could try out a different um, slope, white noise. Since we essentially get rid of that early on, maybe bring the cutoff down to start. Okay, and then for up here, let's add a unison of quite high. Let's also just drench it right at the start. Let's see what that does for us. So there's two effects. First, they have a chorus. So we'll add that. And then they've also got one called Ensemble. Um, we'll add one of those as well. So these will both just add all sorts of neat extra voices to it. And then this is still a touch. You know what I'm thinking? Maybe we have this fade in over a long period of time. Same thing for this guy. Have the sustain up a little bit more. And then maybe vary this with an LFO. Grab this guy and just let it move that LFO knob just a smidge around. Yeah. Now this is really fast and it's also noticeably like predictable. 
So maybe we'll come into here and make it a little bit less obvious of a shape. And slow it even more down. And then in this case, we'll make the decay quite a bit longer so that drop isn't so noticeable. And from here, we're getting, we're going some cool places. I like what this course is doing. Um, these groups, by the way, you can name them. So we can name this like noise uh, thing. This is the noise layer. This is the tone layer. We might also try adding on, we could try this with another waveform, such as a triangle wave. So we get a few harmonics and then we could have a filter sitting in the chain. Ooh, whoops, uh, I did not want that filter there. It made its own group, did not want that. Let's just add the filter. I'd like to put the filter there, please. Filter, there we go. And we'll just move it up. So what this does now, you can see the arrows, goes to the filter, comes out, and then hits our you know, rather simple, modest effect chain. Uh, for here, uh, let's see here, the filter, I just wanna shave off. We could even do this with something with a lot more harmonics and just have it filtered. And we could have these match the movement that's being drawn up here uh, with the filter that could kind of like sell it a little bit more with this being like the sound source. So for the noise, that constant thing maybe is a little bit much. So maybe we have this start off a little lower. got ourselves a nice pad so the creativity what you could do with these things i mean it honestly just it's it's mind-blowing how fast and easy and simple a lot of this stuff is once you know what a single thing does you could turn so much stuff out with just envelopes lfos and the effects that are provided are just awesome uh some extra things we can do just sort of to experiment let's say i want to go off and try some things with some more complex reverb chains uh, but I don't want to set up all these chains right now. Maybe I feel like just sort of getting the result and seeing what the options are. Because uh, I think a reverb chain at the end would be cool. I could just toss a multi-pass on at the end. Remember both of these, yeah, this hits lane one. But lane one does go through lane two and then to lane three. So they meet up at lane three. So here, I could sort of bus process everything. And we could grab a, where are you at? I want to add a reverb thing. Well, we got some stereo imaging too that we could probably mess with. Let's just try a few things. Let's try this modulated reverb. Okay, let's not go that direction. That's not the direction I was thinking. They've got one here. Where is it? I remember seeing it earlier. Um, it's re reverse reverb. That sounds kind of interesting. If I let go, does it reverse? We could do some cool stuff with that. Um, we might have like some C minor. Reverse, G minor, reverse. Whoops. Yeah, that's pretty dang cool. Some macro stuff tossed there on the end. So that is a little bit of phase plan. So we went through, you can see this huge number of effects. We didn't touch nearly all of them at all. Uh, you can do cool stuff with tuned resonators and things of that sort. But the the way, this the process of <laughs> making something creative is so easy. So that's phase plant. That's the snappings, the engine, top 
definitely top three synths that I use currently. No question about it. Thanks for watching and have a blessed day.